great, now I can read your names. <laughs> so I guess you want me to wait? Or? No, go ahead. Okay. Well, good evening. Um, my name is Dennis Chinoy. I live in Bangor. I wanted to thank you uh, very much for coming to our town. I know it's quite a drive, mainly if you. I volunteer with PICA, which is Power and Community Alliances in Bangor, which for many years has focused on issues of social and economic justice at home and across borders. Ever since NAFTA and later CAFTA, it's been clear that such agreements are not win-win propositions for all concerned, as was initially advertised. Rather, these agreements create winners and losers, so it behooves us to understand just who gains and who suffers you know this because the Maine Trade Policy Commission was in fact created in order to evaluate how Maine's businesses, consumers, and ordinary citizens may positively or negatively be affected by trade pacts. Free trade agreements are less about tariffs than about provisions labeled non-tariff barriers to trade, which are all about who can sell what to whom and who can or can't stop them. The what mostly isn't about shirts or bananas or toaster ovens, but items we never imagined could or should be for sale. The barriers in question are current laws that assume that goods and services essential to all of us shouldn't be privately owned, unsafe, or priced out of range of those who need them. So I'm here to talk as well about the Trans-Pacific Partnership, NAFTA and CAFTA primary adverse effect on Maine was widespread industrial job loss and jobs which likely won't return. But the TPP threatens all Mainers in ways way beyond lost jobs as well, threats that under previous trade pacts were technically possible, but mostly hypothetical. Um, if the TPP passes, many protections we take for granted will be at risk because the TPP will permit foreign investors to sue governments, and you've heard that before, so I won't dwell on it. But here's a, a quick cross-border uh, detour. If you ask Bangor's Salvadoran sister city residents what free trade means, they will answer much more simply. They say, the big fish eat the little fish. And they know that their countries south of the border are the little fish. So in the past, it's been the Bolivian town of Cochabamba whose water rights the Bechtel Corporation bought and then charged townspeople fees for collecting rainwater from their own roofs. It's been peasant farmers sued by Monsanto for saving and planting last year's seeds. It's been the Salvadoran government spending millions of dollars to defend itself in the international trade courts against claims for damages in the hundreds of millions of dollars by both US and Canadian mining corporations. El Salvador's infraction was denying mining permits to these companies on environmental grounds, even as previously mined communities feature rivers that have turned orange and groundwater is toxic. So now back to the USA. If the TPP passes, we will for the first time really get a non-hypothetical taste of what our little fish trading partners have had to contend with for years. That's because in the past, it's been US corporations that have largely been doing the suing in these unelected, unaccountable, corporation-friendly international tribunals that arbit these disputes. In contrast, now, the TPP will empower close to 19,000 corporations located in non-little fish countries. Australia, Canada, Japan, Malaysia, among others, to sue the US and by extension our local and state governments as well. I just mentioned that a mining company in Canada, which is not a member of the Central American Free Trade Agreement, nevertheless sued El Salvador under CAFTA. Well, how was that? The Pacific Rim Corporation, headquartered in British Columbia, simply set up a warehouse in Reno, Nevada, expressly for the purpose 
of having a U.S. subsidiary through which to sue a Central American country. In like manner, non-PPP countries, including, for a pertinent example, China, can do the same as long as they have a subsidiary in other TPP countries, like, for a pertinent example, Vietnam. So this litany of who's in and who's out doesn't really apply except theoretically. So if the TPP passes, get ready for an aggressive surge of international tri trade tribunal assaults on many of the goods and services we never thought we had to worry about our foreign corporations headquartered all around the globe. The goods include adequately inspected food, unadulterated medicine, non-toxic children's toys, safe bridges, non-carcinogenic consumer products, non-contaminated drinking water, and whatever else we may have assumed consumers shouldn't have to stay up at night worrying about. The services include, or could include, public education, fire departments, water supplies, sanitation services, roads, libraries, parks, tax collection, and whatever else you may have imagined should belong, should belong to a community and not to private companies. The Citizens Trade Campaign notes that 50 cases were brought by corporations against governments in the first 30 years of the existence of the International Commission on the Settlement of International Disputes, 50. But in the last four years, ICSID, that's that commission, has heard 50 cases each year, with pending claims totaling $25 billion. These are not trivial sums, and the TPP's passage will ensure that this spate of cases will become an avalanche. Cases will be decided by tribunalists you've heard about who are a, rotate, a rotating panel of private sector attorneys not bound by any conflict of interest rules who often prosecute, prosecute such cases when they are not hearing them and whose verdicts permit no appeal. Even the threat of loss in these trade tribunals are sufficient to have governments capitulate corporate demand. So the suits don't really even have to be brought. They have to be threatened to be brought by against people who might not be able to afford the legal costs. So the devil in the details of this problem is even more alarming than I've outlined, but too long here. So I've appended a uh, <coughs> four-page summary just of concerns associated with the investor state threat, not the entire TPP. So to close, I'd like to remind us all what Jim Hightower said about trade agreements negotiated in private between corporate lobbyists and government trade reps, excluding advocates for labor rights, affordable medicines, public health and safety, or environmental standards. <coughs> he said, if you're not at the table, you're probably on the menu. Thank you.